Hi, welcome to Viva Lambda. This is Kem speaking. This video is a part of a series about built-in functions and statements in Python. Feel free to check out other topics in the series if you're interested in learning or remembering Python. Today we are going to briefly cover if statements in Python. It is a very powerful control structure. It formalizes the notion of choice in the form of Boolean tests. The basic idea is that the interpreter executes a certain block of code when the expression of if statement that precedes the block evaluates to true. On the contrary case, that is, when the expression is evaluated to false, the block indented under the if statement is not considered during the execution process. Thus, the interpreter simply jumps at its end. The else keyword help us to designate a block only to be executed when the expression of if statement is evaluated to false. Notice that the content of the else block is still related to the expression that is being evaluated. It's just that it's related in an opposite way. If statements then create a detour in the flow of the execution, which is normally a linear process. Let's see how this works in our example. We have an expression e that evaluates to false since the variable var has value 19 and the expression compares whether 19 is smaller than 10. Thus, when the interpreter comes to the third line, it will look at the value of e, which is false, and it would then jump to the else block to the line 5. It will then continue the execution process as usual, printing uh, the eighth line. The elif keyword is simply a combination of if and else. It permits us to chain conditions and evaluate their corresponding blocks up to the point where we hit the expression that evaluates to true. Notice that when we chain the conditions one after the another, it is important to use conditions that are disjunctive, meaning that the chain will break once an expression is evaluated to true. So if we want the interpreter to consider conditions that come after, they need to be placed outside of the scope of elif statements. Let's see our second example. We have two expressions. First one checks if the variable is smaller than 10, and the second one checks if it's, if it's an even number. In the chain of elif statements, we can see that the first elif statement evaluates to true. The interpreter then would jump to the line 16 right after executing the line 10. The interpreter would skip the line 8, the evaluation of the second elif statement, which, which also evalu evaluates to true. So one should be very careful to use disjunctive conditions when constructing the chain. The lines from 19th till the end here shows a good use of uh, elif statement using disjunctive conditions. Now, if statements are very flexible, so much so that we can implement the for statement using an if statement. However, this is it for now. If you have never heard of for statements, or if you are wondering what they are, click on the box at the top right corner to go to the video on for statements. Now, I don't suppose, but I'd also like to know if any of you ever try to implement while loop with if statements. Please share your experience in comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.